All right. Hello, everyone. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and welcome to the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast number 39. And this is the one about uh, Jeet Kune Do attributes. So in, uh, I think in just about everything that I've ever seen, uh, heard, read, even trained uh, regarding Jeet Kune Do attributes, it seems to revolve around several essential qualities. Because sometimes I think that you'll, you'll hear, you know, some people might refer to them as, as qualities, um, some people might refer to them as attributes. And actually, I think that in, when it comes to um, the, the term attributes and, and, uh, in, in Jeet Kune Do, I think that we, we would all agree, you gotta give um, Paul Vunak credit for popularizing, I, I would say, the term uh, Jeet Kune Do, Jeet Kune Do attributes. Because I, um, I think he has uh, about five, maybe, um, videos all with the, with the term uh, attributes um, in the title, right? So um, you can, everything that, that we talk about today, this, is, this will be another uh, quick uh, broadcast. Everything that we talk about today comes out of these two books, essentially. The Tao, well, look at that. The Tao of Jeet Kune Do and Jun Fan Jeet Kune Do, the textbook, right? So um, these essential qualities, and actually I have a little, a little quiz, a little test for you um, when, when, towards the end. So there's coordination, there's precision, there's power, there's endurance, there's balance, there's body feel, good form. Uh, now, this one is interesting. In the Tao, it's referred to as vision awareness. In the textbook, it's awareness, and then the awareness is broken down into visual awareness, uh, aural awareness, and tactile awareness. Then there's speed, um, timing, and uh, attitude, right? So, so, and it varies between the two. So you want to look in, in, uh, in the Tao, you want to look through uh, pages 42 to 69. It, 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 I mean, they're both treated fairly extensively, right? So in the Tao, pages 42 through 69, um, old school edi edition. And then in the textbook, it's uh, 11 pages from 133 to 144. And again, old school version, right? Okay, so one of the things that I noticed um, in, in those lists is mobility or agility were not listed separately. Actually, they're not listed at all. So that's my quiz or my test for you. Where would you put mobility and agility? Would you put it in with coordination? Would you put it in with balance? Would you put it in with body feel? Would you put it in with good form? Would you put it in with, I don't know, timing, right? Mobility and, and agility. Um, and that's, that's pretty much, it's these two really that I wanted to, to, uh, to talk about. Just, just give you um, an, uh, a, an easy example of how to approach the, the idea of attribute training. Because I'll tell you this, and this this might be um, this might be relevant relevant for um, a, a bunch of you. So Gary is saying flexibility also, right? So um, yeah, where would we put flexibility, right, Gary? So um, back in the old days, because this whole concept of training, uh, technique training, being a way to develop the attributes, or the other way around. Train, training to develop the attributes and then apply the attributes to the technique, right? Because there, the, sometimes people get confused in, in um, you know, which way to, to, to look at it, right? Um, in, the, in the old days, when, when I was training in, in, in traditional stuff, in classical stuff, you never heard about attribute um, development. We focused on developing our techniques, right? Um, you know, so it, it's, it was kind of like if one group was spending a lot of time um, doing their kata in the air and another group was hitting the heavy bag or the focus mitts 
and actually paying attention to sparring, then the question is which group would be better prepared for actual fighting, right? The ones that are doing their stuff in the air in, in a classical fixed manner or the ones that are actually preparing themselves for battle, so to speak, right? So attribute development. Um, it, one idea is that since there, there, there are only so many ways in which the human body can move, agreed? So techniques from different martial arts will be the same or even or, or similar. So it's not so much difference in technique that so-called separates this art from the other art as it might be in how the techniques are trained, right? So in JKD, we're, we're willing to look at anything, um, train in anything, or use anything that will help us to develop efficiency. And that's an important, um, uh, an important point that, that you have to make sure you, you keep paying attention to. It has to be something that will assist us in developing our, our efficiency, right? So let's go back to mobility and agility. So I have two quotes for you from, from uh, Bruce Lee. Mobility is vitally important in Jeet Kune Do. Present a moving target which your opponent has difficulty in hitting or kicking. Uh, then the other one is a skilled fighter never stays in one spot long. He is in constant motion to baffle his opponent, causing him to misjudge the distance, right? So somebody's going to ask me where you can find these quotes. And I don't, I don't, I didn't make a note of that. Sorry. <laughs> right. Anyhow. So, um, you, you know, but, but again, going back to mobility and agility, when I train in classical karate, right, when I train in Shotokan, you learn the different blocks and the different blocks are applied from the different stances, right? Uh, I don't think the word parry was, was ever used. Um, you know, you use your block to stop your opponent's technique and then you perform your, your counter technique, right? But in, in JKD, Bruce Lee recommended being agile and mobile more like a boxer, a boxer and, and, and constantly moving. So that way you're less of a target and you don't have to, to rely on your strong block, right, in order to, 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 to protect you. So, um, the, so now the question becomes, well, how do we develop Agility, let's, let's say, let's start with agility. Well, one way would be, <laughs> Johnny Turner, that's pretty funny, right? One way to develop agility would be the jump rope. So now we're, we're going to borrow from, from boxing. See, now for, for the young people listening to this, that's not a big deal. But if you're an old timer, there, you, you would remember when martial art was martial art and boxing was boxing. And one, you know, one was, was, a, was a, a, a sport and what have you. And then the other one was martial art training. Boxing was not part of, 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 uh, of, of, of martial art training, right? So jump rope for agility. So where do you start? Well, if you were like me, right? Because I was annoyed that my little sister could jump rope and I couldn't, right? So um, if you're like me, you get the jump rope and you start. And what do you develop? You develop the basic... Um, let's call it two-footed jump, right? So you're just up and down with both feet moving like this, right? Okay, well, that's only going to take you so far. And if you look at any boxer, find a, a classic clip of, or find a clip of classic Muhammad Ali uh, jump rope, um, um, Mike, Mike Tyson, any of those guys, you'll notice that the feet are not doing this, right? The feet start doing this thing. You see, where there's kind of like, not a back and forth, but there's, a, there's, a, there's um, um, sequential movement of the feet. And so what that, ha what that develops is in JKD uh, mobility, that's now helping you to develop what we call the rocker shuffle. You see, so this basic jump rope thing of two feet is not going to lend itself, right, um, my, oh, Miguel saying uh, Balboa and Apollo. Yes. So I think that that I, I think R Miguel is referring to. Um, it's my favorite Rocky Three, where where he takes where um, Creed takes um, uh, Rocky from being like a plodding heavy fighter into somebody who's up on the toes. Right. I, th I think that's what Miguel is talking about. Um, so 
now you have to apply the rocker shuffle because the rocker shuffle it, it added to your agility training is what leads to mobility training. And now you can go back to that Bruce Lee quote, right? Where you present a moving target, which your opponent has difficulty in hitting or kicking. Plus, if you're already in motion, then it's easier for you to launch your attack than, than if you are stationary, right? Um, my, my, my friend and student, Miguel, who just commented, Miguel works on, on, on Porsches. He's one of um, Miami's top um, Porsche, um, um, what do you call them? Technicians, right? So, so the, 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 the cars that he works on, yeah, they can go from zero to 60 in like two and a half seconds or what have you. But if you drive an old Mercedes like mine, it's better to be in motion first in order to get to the, the 60 miles an hour, right? <laughs> so anyhow, um, uh, it, in, so once you got the, the rocker shuffle down, then you want to take it and apply it to all of your footwork patterns, right? Because then what that does is that it takes your training from a, a, a static nature to a dynamic nature which is always what we're looking for. If we, if we were having a discussion about balance, we would want to be talking about the development of static balance versus, well, not versus, but along with the development of dynamic balance, right? So one is balance in a stationary um, method, and then the other one is balance um, with control of center of gravity, so that would be dynamic balance, right? Um, so... Any any martial artist of any any style or any art who wanted to improve mobility and agility would then be well served to investigate boxing training, right? In Jeet Kune Do, we don't have that issue because the investigation of other things is part and parcel of our approach. But if I was stuck in something more classical, right? I won't name anything because I don't want to, you know, annoy anybody. But um, um, it, it, it's not a big deal for us. We're always willing, like I said earlier, to go out and train anything if we see a way that it will lend to our efficiency, right? So this open-minded open approach to martial art training, that's one of the major benefits that, um, that you could say was, was, brought, was brought about by the more, the, the oh gosh, I don't want to get into you know, political comparisons or what have you, right? But um, okay, I, I will. For, j just, just, just for this, let's jump now to coordination, right? Um, in the Filipino stick fighting, so if you take something like um, like double stick training, right? Like what we call heaven six, for example, or, or we'll just we'll call it heaven three, right? And so you go left hand, right hand, left hand, or you go right hand, left hand, right hand. That um, in interchanging of the hands is applicable to, let's say, basic bun uh, punching, right? Basic boxing. Because it's right hand, then left hand, then right hand again. So, one, two, three from Kali double stick is, can be related to one, two, three from Western boxing. The idea of tempo, long, 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 can be trained while you're working in the double stick, so you can train it in the double stick and then take it and relate it immediately to, to your, your boxing. The motions might not be identical, but the, the, um, the, uh, the overall mechanics right, can be re relatable. So, so that, that's, an, that's an example of, of why sometimes you, you might want to get out of what it is that you're used to doing and look at, at, at different ways of, of doing things, right? So, like I said, I'm not trying to be p political or anything and, and get into that old stupid argument about this, this interpretation of Jeet Kune Do versus that interpretation of Jeet Kune Do and all that stuff, right? Um, it, it, my, my, what's important, my intention, is that you understand how to use an intelligent and strategic approach to what you're doing. Because if we go back to that coordination thing, right? Now, I'm one of the few... Um, black people that you will come across who cannot play basketball. It's not my deal. I, I, can, I can do any kind of martial art coordination, probably. I can do a, a ton of different Filipino Kali coordination drills. I cannot dribble a, a basketball. But I know that basketball requires coordination. So should I, in, in the pursuit of Jeet Kune Do efficiency, 
Should I go spend a whole lot of time now trying to develop the coordination that comes from basketball? Not really. I'm, I'm too old. I don't have enough time left on the planet to start working on, on stuff that is not immediately applicable. So I will opt for Filipino Kali more so than I would opt for, for, um, for basketball or, or juggling, you know, because ju juggling can, can give you some, some, um, some manual coordination also, right? So anyhow, so that's what I, that's what I wanted to, to, um, to, to point out and, and share with, um, with, you, with you guys today, right? Because remember, w w what is it that we're trying to develop? We're trying to develop the attributes that we need for kicking, punching, trapping, and grappling, right? The four skills of empty-handed combat. But, but keep in mind that, that it's not like I go over here and I work on developing the attributes and then I, then I, I, try, to, a way, I try to find a way to work them into the technique. No, while you're doing the technique, that's, that's part of the attribute development also, right? So, um, yeah, I, I'll leave it at that, right? And I hope that, that I, was, I was pretty clear in what we're talking about here. So I'll remind you one last time, um, for your own research, for your own edification, take a look at um, the Tao, pages uh, 42 to, to um, was it 42 to 69, I think it is, right? And then pages 133 to 134 of, the, um, of Jun Fan Ji Kune Do. Right? Oh, Mr. Wells, there you go. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right? So that's it for today. As usual, feel free to share, like, comment. Uh, you can now go, if, if, um, if, if you don't want to spend a whole lot of time on, on, on Facebook, this, the, I will uh, be putting everything up. There is a new uh, I, I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast channel on the YouTube. So you can go over there uh, in, in a couple of hours and the video will be uploaded there. Uh, I encourage you to sign up for notifications so that you know when, when we go live and you know when the new video is posted both on Facebook and, uh, and the YouTube. So be sure to, to, to sign up for notifications there. Um, ilovejikundo.com is where you can find um, volume one of the, the uh, quick skill series. And... Um, Tonight, so I messed up last Wednesday's attempt to dialogue with Mark Stewart of um, JKD uh, Re Rebellion. So I'm going to do that again with him this evening and post it tomorrow. And then on um, Friday, um, hang on, let me, let, me, let me check and see. <laughs> you know, I, I, have, I have a few of the Jeet Kune Do dialogues um, already scheduled. So on Friday, we'll be talking with uh, Guy Chase out of um, Massachusetts, right? And that'll, that'll be, th these next two will be pretty interesting uh, for you. Uh, and what's it? I think that's it, all right? So everybody, again, thanks for, for, for tuning in. Like, share, comment. I'll go through the comments after, after we're finished. And uh, anything that I need to comment back to you on, any questions I need to answer, I'll go ahead and do that. And uh, I'll see you back here next week, same time, for another uh, edition of the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. You guys take care. Have a good one.